Okay, this is a crayon wax slug, a waxer. A lot of guys are making these. I've been making them for quite a while. I've made several hundred. This wax was heated directly on the electric stove using a little can until the wax almost smoked. So it was very liquidy. It grabs great. This is also one of my uh, trimmed holes. It has stuff inside, so it kind of grabs it. So let me saw this thing open. I want to try and get it below the cup so I can extract it and look at it. Okay. Alright. I did pretty good. I got below the cup. Good guess. Okay, I think I'll switch over to the Exacto here. And I'll try and trim the side of it without cutting myself open. I just want to cut through the plastic part of the hull. I don't want to cut into the piston if I can. Because I want to see how that comes apart. Yeah, it's starting to peel now. I'll put the blade the other way so I can just lift it up without, hopefully, without cutting into the slug very much. Okay. Should be able to peel it out now. I hope. Just a little bit holding it up right in here. Yeah, real careful with these kind of knives. It is so easy to cut yourself with these little exacto knives. Yeah. Now you can see how mine, the trimmer thing that I came up with, that just sort of opens it like a can. It leaves a little bit of material in there that really holds that baby in there. Okay, so what happens when it blows out from the gun, that little crimping opens up and pretty much destroys the top of this. So that's something to think about. Now these have little slits in them already, if I could find them. There we go. Peel it away. Okay, yeah. See that good? I want to see how the wax holds on it, too. So when it's super hot like that, you can see the crayon wax is sticking real good to the uh, inside of the, the power piston. I mean the cup. I keep calling this fucking thing a power piston. It is a cup. I want to peel it all the way back. I'm just going to pull that out. Do a little judicious cutting to ease it on out of there. Okay. It's starting to come now. Okay. So, I have extracted. So, I think temperature of wax has a lot to do with how well the crayon wax grabs. Let's look at this cup. Yeah, the heat of the shot. See the little dimples? The heat of the shot has made this thing look like a little golf ball on the inside. Yeah, it's not just leaving wax residue behind. It has literally melted itself into the cup just a little bit, the, where the shot touches it, because it's so damn hot. And that really makes that wax grab. As you can see, I'm going to try and flick it off with the dull part of the knife, so we can see how that comes off. Yeah, it's really, it's almost a blend of wax and plastic where it comes to there. It doesn't want to flake off. It's grabbing it like glue. So if you get your crayon wax to the point where it's just about smoking, this is what you end up with. Now, the other part I want to do is I want to do a little crush test. I have another piece of paper hiding under here. Get that out. And I want to crush it. I'm just going to use my uh, big Chinese cleaver here because it's got a lot of nice leverage on it. And I want to see how much effort it takes to crush it. Okay, I just barely pushed on it and went poof. Okay? So that's how fast they explode when they hit something. They just hold together long enough to blow apart. So that probably has its own very specific ballistics, that kind of uh, crumbly crayon wax with a lot of titanium dioxide in it, a lot of filler in it. Makes it crumbly. You get it super hot. It sticks good to the cup. Bonds inside your shell good. And then w the minute it hits something hard, it'll just break into little pellets. Okay, 
So that's a crayon slug. See, I can just crumble it with my fingers, and I can get every pellet just about to come out. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, here I've got a straight-up paraffin pour. Again, this was pretty hot when I did it. I got it pretty darn hot. And uh, just to make sure everything worked out good. I'm wondering if I can get this one to come out. A lot of these, if you squeeze it like this, it'll start to come out. This one won't. Okay. Cut it in half again using the saw part of this Microtech, which seems to work better than the Exacto when it comes to cutting through this heavy plastic. Okay. Got that out of there. All right. I'm well below the cup. Let's do the same thing. Let's gently slice through it so we can just get at it. There we go. Peel this wing away. Okay, now this one is just a more of a traditionally trimmed shell, so it's not holding it at all at the top. The only thing that was holding it was this little ridge of paraffin, and I can feel a little bit of paraffin that has leaked through on the sides. So that's what secures it is the surface tension between this paraffin and this hull. And as you see, the hulls are very slippy. Here's the paraffin that's on the inside of the hull. And it was very hot, so it got down in there. But it's also very slippy, so once it breaks, it just goes. So that's cool. Let's peel this thing open. If I can find the little slits. There's a little slit right there. Okay. Now with the candle wax, yeah, it's clean. It's coming out very clean. Now, it could be a temperature thing. It could be the crayon wax got hotter because I heated it directly. This paraffin wax was also heated directly in a can. But maybe it just didn't get quite as smoking hot. I don't know. But it didn't melt itself into the cup for whatever reason. You know, when you're doing these things, you're going to get some variations, I imagine unless you could control every variable, how much shot, how much temperature, everything, you, you're going to get some variations. What I'm intrigued by is how well, it's hold, how well it holds. Now you saw the crayon wax, it really, it didn't want to come out of there at all. This one just comes right out. The cup has a little bit of wax residue at the bottom. Okay. There's plenty of wax around all of the shot. So let's give this a crush test, just like I did with the other one. See how much force it takes, and then see how easily you can separate all the wax beads and whatnot. So there we go. Okay. Yep, that really came apart easy. Okay. Let's see what we got underneath here. Okay. I'm going to get BBs everywhere because they just rolled right out of there. Okay. Now with the candle wax. I'm seeing the BB separating even more so than with the crayon wax. Even easier, it seems like. Yeah. I mean, the actual separation from shot pellet to the binding agent is almost 100%. That little pellet there doesn't have anything clinging to it. So that's interesting. That's different than the uh, crayon wax. This wax is just, it feels a lot different than the crayon wax under my hands. It's, uh, it's not gummy at all. The crayon wax is a little bit gummy. It has a little bit of grab, a little bit of stickiness, a little bit of gumminess to it. And this is just very, almost like soapy feeling compared to that. The crayon wax has a little bit more of a, of a clay-like texture to it. All right, well, let me get rid of this. We'll do the next one. Okay, and this is some of my federal burgundy shotgun slug wax I came up with. So let's see what it's like. Saw this thing open again. Okay. And this is a shell that I trimmed using that shell prepper style, can opener style trimmer, so it's going to grab it pretty hard at the top. So I have to cut all that stuff away. Alright, there we go. Let's saw it in half. Alright. That's the way it looks on the inside there. No way to push that out. Okay, 
we'll just try this routine again. Getting this thing split. Okay, is that? Yep, it's split. Okay, yeah. And once again, the top is going to grab, so I got to cut through that a little bit. should be able to unpeel it. Yep, there we go. Okay, now when you remember when I was the similar shell with the crayon wax, when I unpeeled it, the whole top pretty much fell apart. It was real crumbly. And this is much tougher. It left a little baboom. Let's take a look at the inside of this. Okay, this wax too, it was very, very hot, just like the crayon wax heated directly. It has gotten all down the inside of this. It's very gummy. It doesn't uh, flake off at all. It's like uh, it's kind of tacky, gluey. Let's take a look at this and see how well it separates from the, the piston. I mean, from the uh, freaking cup. Gosh, I'll get that right one of these days. Why? Why do I want to call it a power piston? Because I'm used to the shells that have one thing. A cup power piston arrangement thing that slips in. These are two parts. The federal shells have a doohickey that collapses and helps buffer the shot. It's a shot buffer. Got gunpowder out of there. So, anyway, enough of me explaining why I can't call this what it is. So, I'll try and cut this cup away. It's not coming away very nice. I want to do like I did with the crayon and try and preserve the slug and get the slug to come out of there, but it's not wanting to come easily. So I'll just try and get all the parts of it off. This is grabbing pretty good. All right, there we go. Now it's now it's free. I feel it coming now. So what's left behind? Okay, I can see the little golf ball dimpling. Can you see that? The little tiny dents all inside there from the hot shot. Not as severe as the crayon wax, uh, because as, it, as you're pouring them, the wax is cooler and cooler. This might have been poured later on in the batch. I'm just trying to see with the back of the knife how that flakes off. It's it it doesn't exactly. It leaves like a gummy residue. You can kind of keep scraping and scraping and get some, but it's pretty sticky. Let's take a look at this. Have a little cavity there where some wax didn't get in. Yep, pretty dry load. This is a pretty dry load, so this is like all the others. It's not like it's all heavy wax or anything. So, let it, let's crush this one and see how much effort it takes to crush it. Okay, it's taking a lot more effort than the other two. A lot more. There we go. Okay, I had to stand up and press down into it, and it kind of went... <laughs> didn't go... Boosh, like the paraffin. You saw how the shot from the paraffin went... Boosh. Okay. And here's what my kind of wax turns into. It does crumble apart. If you keep going at it, I'm sure we can get all the shot out of it, too. But it's, it's just different. You see what I'm saying? Oh, that's the whole purpose of the dissection, was to see what all the different waxes are like and to see if there's any differences. And there is. There's a big difference between crayon wax and paraffin wax. Crayon wax seems, when it gets really hot, seems to be a lot stickier and, at the same time, crumbly. It's probably due to the binders and stuff inside. Paraffin wax is pretty brittle and crumbly. And once you subject it to any kind of crushing force, it just, the shot it literally is rolling across the table here. Um, I'm just kind of trying to crumble this up the same as I did the other. I was just picking the other stuff up and crumbling it. This is very gummy wax. This reminds me of that kind of wax you would chew on certain candies that had like juicy fillings in them, Coke bottles filled with juice. It's got that kind of... Uh, it also, parts of it anyway, are food grade. <laughs> I would not recommend eating my wax, though, because <laughs> the dye is not food grade. But the uh, yeah, certain parts of it are. 
interesting. So it does free up the shot. That was a pretty dry load. You can see there's not that much wax compared to shot. But it's still, I mean, you can see that's like sticking to the paper. It's very tacky. I'm trying to see if I can get it to stick to my finger. I don't think so. It sticks to the paper, though. So just interesting, just different things. So that's it for the shell dissection. I'm going to show you the next rig in a second here.